We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180-1230, KGEO, 1410 KERI. 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and now in the San Francisco Bay Area on the Internet. So, Clay, what do you think of Clint Hill? You know, it was interesting. I'm always, um, I'm always more interested in the person, uh-huh. even beyond the story of why they became who they became or how they became who they became, but in the person. Yes. Well, we've got an interesting person on the, on the phone right now. Uh, actually, this gentleman is on my short list of people I've always wanted to interview, so this is, this is going to be fun for me. Uh, and I'm going to introduce our first guest by telling a little story. Our second guest. Our second guest, I'm sorry. Uh, on November 22, 1963... 50 years ago, three very famous and very different people died that day. President John F. Kennedy, which we all know about, was assassinated. C.S. Lewis, the author of Mere Christianity, and uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and Aldous Huxley, the author of Brave New World. They all died. Our guest, Dr. Peter Kreef, wrote an incredible book called Between Heaven and Hell, and it's the story of those three men, obviously, Not a true story that we know of, but the story of those three men meeting in the clouds and talking about what happens next. Fascinating subject for a book, isn't it? Uh, Our guest, Peter Kreeft, uh, wrote 67 different books. He's also a professor of philosophy at Boston College and the King's College. Peter, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So you're you're a popular writer of Christian philosophy, theology, and apologetics, and I, I have to tell you, every time I go on your website, and I highly recommend your website, uh, I, I was on this morning at about 4.30, and I was actually on for about two and a half hours. I couldn't get off of it. I just, I loved it. There's always interesting, fascinating things there to read and to look at. So uh, I, I love your writing. What's the website? Well, uh, I am not responsible for my website. Dave Nevins, a good friend of mine, uh, has done that, so give him the credit. Uh, I don't even visit my website. Well, Dave's done a great job on it. In fact, I was, I was, has. I was reading a, an interesting article this morning on uh, God's viewpoint on suffering. I thought it was very, 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 very fascinating. So, and Clay just asked what the website is. It's uh, petercreef.com. And Kreef right. is spelled K-R-E-E-F-T. Bingo, you win a cookie this morning. (laughs) (laughs) It's an unusual name. It's Dutch. It means lobster. You know, I was going to ask you if it's Dutch because I'm half Dutch. My mom mom actually played with Anne Frank as a kid. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So did Marty. (laughs) (laughs) Cute. (laughs) So this is how we're going to spend the next 20 minutes, huh? (laughs) Let's get serious with Peter. Okay. (laughs) So... So, Peter, tell me, I mean, what a fascinating concept, an idea for a book. Where, where did you come up with the idea? And, and explain to our listeners why these three people on this particular day and, and who they were. Well, I had written a dull essay, which I never published, on the three main worldviews of the modern world. One is traditional Christianity, theism. One is modern liberal pragmatism, uh, relativism. And the third is uh, a kind of Eastern mysticism, like Buddhism. Uh, And then I suddenly realized that these three guys, who died the same day, perfectly represented those three worldviews. So I imagined the meeting in the next world and arguing. I uh, wrote the book in three days. It wrote itself. Usually it takes at least half a year to write a book. I sent the manuscript to one of C.S. Lewis's friends and students, Christopher Derrick, who wrote a number of books, some of them about C.S. Lewis. And he instantly wrote me back saying, I am insanely jealous. This is exactly the book I was planning to write, but you got there first. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. So, again, explain where each of the three men are in that, in that spectrum of the three worldviews that you were discussing. Well, Lewis is an Orthodox Christian, uh, and uh, Huxley is a kind of universalist uh, mystic, basically a Buddhist, uh, and I interpret Kennedy as a kind of modern, pragmatic, uh, everything-for-everybody person. Okay, <clears throat> I, I, I can see that. And, you know, reading the book, and it's, and it's a great read. It's about a, you know, I'd say a one-night read. It's, it's a very small book. Wait a minute, one night? I've been looking at it for a week. I haven't finished it. Well, there's a it reason It didn't take for that me a week time. to write it. I, I mean, know, that's what I was... Read to read it. When, when well, you said that, I, was, I went, oh, my God, am I a slow reader? Well, see, part of the problem, Peter, is there's no pictures in it, so Clay has a hard time with the book. Yeah. So. <laughs> right, you have to make the pictures up in your head. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, it's it's just a, it's a fascinating. You said that the three men were part of the great conversation that's been going on for centuries. Tell yep. me what what you consider the great conversation. Well, what is the meaning of life? Is certainly the the overarching question. 
uh, people today don't even uh, always accept that question as meaningful. That's a, a so-called meta-narrative, which postmodernism says we can't have anymore. But we have to have it. Implicitly, everybody's got a, uh, a worldview, an answer to fundamental questions. What's the nature of reality? What's the nature of me? And what's my relationship to reality? We are having a conversation with Dr. Peter Kreef, professor of philosophy at Boston College and the author of a great book called Between Heaven and Hell. I think everybody asks that same question sometime in their life, though. What's the meaning of life or what, why am I even here? Yeah. Which is yeah. an interesting question I've asked myself a number of times. Well, I, I can see why you would. Yeah. Uh, I knew that was coming, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the in the book, you 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 had a great question. You did uh, in a section there on defining who Jesus was, and you said that Kennedy said he was God become man, but not man who became a god. The opposite. Okay. Kennedy is the secular humanist who right. thinks he's a man whom the church then divinized, whereas Lewis is an Orthodox Christian who believes that he's God from eternity who became man in time. Okay. Now you know, as far as Kennedy's definition of who Jesus was, I I could see that it just fit. Where, where did you get that? Did you get that from any any writings that you've seen from from say Kennedy and? No, it's a cynical interpretation. Uh, Gary Wills, I think, in his book Bear Ruined Choirs, interprets Kennedy that way, although Wills likes it, and, and I dislike it. We have a saying in Massachusetts, uh, there's a lot of Kennedy Catholics here, but not many Catholic Kennedys. <laughs> well, that was proven in a recent election. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very well done, Peter. Very well done. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Between Heaven and Hell is the book. Go yes, ahead, Yes, thank you. Marty. Thank you. Uh, in the prologue to the book, you mentioned that you feel Brave New World and The Abolition of Man are two of the most prophetic books of the 20th century. Why? They show us where we're going. A prophet is someone who who sees forward, not with a kind of determinism. Uh, prophets always offer choice and hope. But if we continue in our present trajectory, uh, this is what the future looks like. Back in the 50s, uh, Huxley wrote uh, the novel in the 30s. He wrote a book called Brave New World Revisited, and he addressed the question, how was I wrong? And his basic answer was, I was wrong because I thought it would take 300 years. It's coming much sooner than that. Wow. So if you want to see the future of Western civilization, read Brave New World. Yeah, and unfortunately that's, that's happening. What conclusions do you think people come to with this book? Uh, between Heaven and between Hell, you mean? Or yeah. Brave New World? Uh, between Heaven and Hell. Uh, well, they can come to any conclusion they like. All I do is paint three pictures and have them choose between those three pictures and have them know what they're choosing. So it's, it's like a museum. You don't actually sell a picture, you just display them. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to tell you something interesting about that book, and I think I mentioned this to you when you and I first started talking on, on, online. Uh, I had a very, very good friend of mine, a very wealthy individual in Toronto, my hometown, and uh, he was on the fence back and forth as to, as to whether or not he was a Christian or not. He was m more along the Kennedy lines, and he was <coughs> dying of cancer, and I remember sending him that book, your book, and that book made the difference. His wife told me after he passed away that uh, that ma that book made the difference in his life, and it and and be he became a Christian because of that book. Wow, it's yeah. amazing how God uses the most unlikely means. A, a fantasy book by an absent-minded professor yeah. to actually <laughs> draw a soul to it. Wow. <laughs> well, I you saw know. the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting book, and you know, it's funny when when I when I first heard that from his wife, I was it reminded me of uh, General Wallace who wrote Ben Hur. The reason he wrote Ben Hur was to decide in his own mind how he felt about Christianity, and after mm -hmm. writing Ben Hur, he became a Christian. Yep. So yep. sometimes teaching something is the best way of learning it yourself. Yeah, incredible. When we come back from the break, I want to talk a little more about some of your other books. Okay. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio News Talk 1180.